Hello, and welcome to yet another completely unprofessional unboxing. Scott here, and this will be the third one that I have done today. Uh, as stated through the other ones, uh, this is missing the forward-facing camera. Uh, my daughter broke her elbow a few days ago, and we've been waiting for some phone calls from her doctors to schedule an appointment, and it's been a ridiculous hassle. So, <laughs> as you can see in the VASIN video that I did, um, hopefully I edited it all together to make it somewhat seamless, but uh, had to pause it a couple times due to phone calls coming in, and it's still not yet resolved, but, you know, such is the way with, um, uh, you know, the American medical bureaucratic system. So, <clears throat> enough about me. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, this is something that um, I've been looking for some time, um, you know, as... For those who have watched, uh, you know, my videos, I, I am, you know, if anything, a collector and collectors tend to keep their eyes out for certain things that, uh, you know, that appeal to them. And a lot of the things that I like to uh, collect are, um, you know, certain books for Call of Cthulhu uh, that are, you know, relatively rare or at least appeal to some of the, some of the other things that I like. And uh, this is one that uh, is, I wouldn't consider it to be a difficult find it can be a bit pricey at times uh depending on who's selling it uh you know someone over here as opposed to someone over in the uk hint hint as to what it might be uh but uh this this was a find uh like most things that you know i do when when i'm looking for something to collect i i am looking for deals of course uh because the the price speculation on an rpgs is wildly swingy uh most oftentimes and not utterly ridiculous and um you know, just kind of, you know, put a, a horrible light on certain people, um, you know, who, well, for, 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 you know, not to drag this on, just the pricing for collectors gets to be a bit absurd. So, you know, you, you don't want to pay collector collector's prices. I don't care how rare the thing is. Nothing is worth some of these prices that they try to sell it for. So uh, when these uh, things come up at a reasonable rate, uh, reasonable pricing, you try to grab them and and hope nobody else sees them. <laughs> so uh, that was the case with this one. So be, to uh, kind of carry on and uh, from this point, let's take a look inside and see what it is. Got my trusty Coleman camping steak knife here to uh, delicately cut this thing open. And hopefully I can say delicately better next time I say it. Uh, but uh, let's let's give it a little little opening here. I think, oh, you know what? There's already a tear in it. There we go. That should be good for now. Oh, no. Oh, we got to get through the tape. All right. And there we are. All right. So let's move this thing out. And what do we have here? <clears throat> we have green pleasant land. Um, the British 1920 to 30s Cthulhu Source Pack, um, by Games Workshop and Chaosium. Uh, there was a line of books that, uh, Games Workshop did for Call of Cthulhu back in the day, and most of them, uh, are, you know, relatively rare, and most of them are collector's items, and this is one of the ones that, uh, uh, a lot of people are, you know, have been, uh, looking for. Uh, to be perfectly fair, one of the reasons why this was such a good deal, it's not in the most perfect of condition. There's a little scratch down the side. The, uh, the spine is a little bit worn. It looks like it's been well used, uh, for the most part. So this is, you know, and this is, this is nothing that I consider to be an issue with, with a lot of gaming books. I'm not looking for a trophy to hang on, um, you know, the shelf or the wall and, you know, game, gaming books are meant to be used. And so, you know, when they come out, come back in this, you know, relatively used condition, I consider it a good thing. As long as the pages are in relatively good shape, there's not a lot of damage or drawings on the inside. And, you know, primarily it's to, you know, keep it useful because most everything that, that I collect are things that I want to use in one form or another. <clears throat> They're not just, a, you know, another number to, you know, put into the spreadsheet and then, you know, something that I can just, you know, corner off as collection complete moving on uh this is something that i'm, I'm going to be reading something that i'll you know probably use one way or another you know as time goes on and it's there for me to uh enjoy whenever i want 
but uh, anyways, so green and pleasant land. Uh, what is it? Well, to to begin, uh, I, I've been you know horribly and wrongly confused. Uh, confused. <laughs> that well, that's given. Uh, horribly and wrongly accused of being a um, an anglophile, and so uh, this does not get, do any sort of a job convincing people otherwise. Uh, but yeah, so um, I do enjoy uh, the things taking you know op- obviously taking place over. In the UK and such, um, you know, I've got a lot of friends over in the UK. I enjoy, you know, uh, British television, humor, so on. You know, food, candies, delicacies, all that stuff, and uh, just you know, in a roundabout way, if that makes me a an Anglophile, well, there's so many worse files <laughs> you could be associated with. Uh, an Anglophile would 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 be far. Uh, you know, would, would be perfectly acceptable as far as I'm concerned. So, <clears throat> excuse me, a little scratchy. Uh, so, yeah, so what is this? Well, it is, as stated, a, a, a British 1920s and 30s Cthulhu source pack or book. Um, let's see here. Uh, compiled by, by Pete Tamlin. Uh, writers are Andy Bradbury, Graham Davis, uh, Richard Edwards, Chris Elliott, Mark Gas- Gasconi, uh, Pete Jeffrey, Carolyn Rogers, Marcus Rowland, Norman Tamlin, and Pete Tamlin. <clears throat> Sorry, a little scratchy. Been talking for a while uh, and, and yelling at people um, at uh, hospitals. So, yeah, so what, what do we have in here? So we've, we've got, you know, bibliography, we've got a bit of history, the inland waterways, uh, biographies, the occult, motoring characters, a timeline for Britain and Europe from 1918 to 1939, railways, social life, Fortean and disastrous timeline, sea travel, communications, archaeology, the horror of the Glen, crime and punishment, follies, death in the post, entertainment, Britain and the mythos, the shadow over dark bank, public health, aviation, the running man by Brian Lumley, and money and prices. So yeah, and I've read those completely out of order. But I read left to right, not down, up, down. <clears throat> okay, so so what do we get with all this? So we get a, a variety of biographies of people of the time. And, you know, obviously we've, we've got some royalty mixed in with probably literary people along with, um, you know, artists and other whatnot. Now, th- now these are real life people. This is not going to have a mixture of, uh, you know, real life personalities and, and biographies along with some uh, fictional characters uh, like, you know, like you may have seen in the Vason video. So we go into some details of clothing and butlers, uh, some pictures of <clears throat> what looks to be London at the times. Uh Let's see here. So we've got some details on social life, which would be something that you would probably want to focus on uh, in, in, you know, England at the time. Uh, Communications, that's always a thing in 1920s Cthulhu is the availability of communications and what's being utilized at the time. No, uh, Teresa uh, and and Bobby, you don't have a cell phone. And no, there's no... Um, uh, you know, there's no, um, there's no pay phones, uh, in the Philippines. So you can call home to mother. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, te- technological details are, you know, would be something that you would want to focus upon because it, it would be totally different from, from a place to place as you travel the world, uh, which is probably, you know, fairly focused upon if you're running in the, uh, you know, if you have the masks of, uh, Nyarlathotep, uh, campaign, uh, entertainment of the times, public health, another important aspect that uh, uh, sometimes can be a bit hand waved or uh, you know handled in a uh, not too sure manner uh, for Call of Cthulhu in the in the twenties. <clears throat> a bit bit of history of it. Okay, so we kind of got through a lot of the boring parts. Well, I wouldn't say boring, but just you know necessarily kind of just, you know, uh, mainstream stuff. Uh, and then we get into the interesting stuff here. We've got the occult. Of course, there's going to be a bit of information on Aleister Crowley. We've got the witchcraft revivals, um, which, well, let's see here. It kind of began in the 1800s, but I would imagine that, you know, it could roll into the late 1800s, but 
you know, roll well into the, you know, 1920s, uh, secret societies, um, the Society for Psychical Research. Okay, is that a word? Psychical? Uh, Harry Price, uh, the Borley Decora Declaration and the Decoration. Uh, so timeline for Britain and Europe from 1918 to 1939. Fortean and Disasters timeline. That's an interesting thing. I, I can't think of anything that, that has an actual focus on you know, specific disasters over the years to, uh, you know, in, in the supplements. But then again, I don't, I, I, as, as much as I like to collect the Call of Cthulhu stuff, I don't have a lot of the old supplements. Um, so I don't know, because this, this is something that was done, uh, let's see here, uh, published 1987. So, so the, the format and the information provided is different uh, than what is, you know, presented for 7th edition. And that's kind of why I like to collect the older stuff when I when I can because it just gives a nice perspective. There's there's information that uh, uh, it's a little bit more succinct or just not readily readily available for the seventh edition materials. All right, follies. All right, so Britain in the mythos. Aha, uh -huh. is this the infamous map? Yes, here we are. Okay, so one of the things that was uh, brought to my attention was. It, as much as the information here might be good and usable, some attention to details <laughs> were overlooked. As you can see, uh, the southeastern portion of the island, uh, number, number 32 here, uh, if you reference the map, you will see that that is definitely the Scottish Highlands, right? Scottish Highlands. This now belongs to Scotland. Perfect. <laughs> uh, okay, carrying on. <clears throat> Aviation. Uh, yep. Certain airplanes, the inland waterways, which would be important for, of course, uh, for England. Uh, the Rolls Royce, the best car in the world. Yes. Let's see here. What was, what did we have here? Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce Silver Ghost uh, for between 1906 and 1925. Uh, would have cost you uh, 1,300 pounds. And then we have different railways. Whoop, the air kicked on, so. Uh, so, yep, and then, okay, so then we have, we start, so we've got about, oh, about 43 pages, it looks like, of just uh, setting information. So just enough to kind of flesh out the world of the time and utilize uh, you know, you, to be utilized in your campaign if it takes place entirely within the uh, uh, the UK. <clears throat> so then we've got a, an adventure here, the you know, brutal murder in Scotland, the horror of the Glen. And wait a minute. Huh. This, hmm. Okay, so I, not, not to be sidetracked here, but I think someone... So I, I, I'm in the Southern California area, and the only uh, convention we really have that's, uh, in, in, that's not a ridiculous drive where you have to fly there is Strategicon. And uh, someone there, you know, who runs uh, Call of Cthulhu games, uh, usually runs them late in the evening. Uh, this looks familiar, because I, I believe he ran an adventure that's, that looks and sounds familiar to this uh, that, um, <clears throat> that didn't ring a bell. And I knew it was... Um, you know, a, uh, a published one because he had print out copies of it and whatnot. But uh, um, this probably is what it was. I think it was. If so, uh, it, it was a fairly interesting adventure. Uh, anyways, okay, so moving on after that, we have Death in the Post. Oops, I'm a little bit off camera there. Oh, God, that's... That's a lot of NPCs for a short little adventure. Uh, the Shadow over Dark Bank. And I believe that. And then the Running Man. Okay, this is, like, is this just a story? Yeah. A bit of a story by Brian Lumley. And there you are. So the volume, this volume is a companion to the third edition. Okay, so this is third edition Call of Cthulhu which allows the full horrors of the Cthulhu mythos to be enacted in the good old 1920s to 30s Britain. Heat of the Empire? 
center of civilization. I think it meant heart. I could be wrong. Woof. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I guess the map wasn't the only thing that may have, may have needed editing. But of course, correct me. Uh, was was 1920s Britain known as the the heat of the empire? Oh boy, that sounds like a uh, late night Cinemax show. Uh, and an all around and an all around top hole spiffing place to set your Call of Cthulhu campaign. What? Uh, featured within are sections on British characters, history, travel, the occult, and much more besides, which provide all the information keepers require for British Cthulhu roleplay. Also included three new adventures. The Horror of the Glen, a brutal murder in the Scottish Highlands is not all that it seems. Death in the Post, a strange papyrus, a horrific murder, and a plea for help from a respective gentleman. And The Shadow of a Dark Bank. Even on holiday, there's no rest for an in intrepid investigator. Plus a contribution from the British master of mythos, Brian Lumley. Uh, there we are. And let's see. Internal art was by uh, Martin McKenna and Ian Cook. And the maps by Charles Elias. Produced, or Elliot, sorry. And produced by Games Workshop Design. So there you are. Um, yeah, a bit of a, a golden ticket uh, for um, a lot of the uh, Call of Cthulhu collectors out there. Uh, as mentioned, this was quite the deal, and it was presented as such due to, you know, some of the physical damage. It is not, but it, like I said, it is not unattractive. There's nothing really, you know, physically broken or torn with it, so it's in excellent shape. So I consider it a win-win to get an excellent classic uh, source book uh, for, uh, you know, for Britain and Call of Cthulhu, and also for a fantastic deal. Well, there you go. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Uh, this has been yet another completely unprofessional unboxing. Uh, my name is Scott, in case you have forgotten. So with that, I think this is going to conclude the uh, the little string of unboxings that uh, uh, that I will be doing for this week. Uh, I'll be you know dropping one today, which would be October 12th, and then dropping another one the uh, prior days after. Uh, thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, definitely give a uh, you know a like or subscribe if you haven't done so already. And definitely check me out along with Keith from Rolling Boxcars on Titter Pigs, the tabletop RPG podcast. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up for that. Also, uh, we we just had um, uh, we just had an interview with um, oh boy, I'm going to draw a blank, but um, yeah, I should have notes for this. But anyways, there was a podcast with uh, with one of the creators of the Shiver RPG. Check that out. Uh, we've got more to come. We had to reschedule um, uh, Ken Height, but uh, hopefully we'll get him, get him here uh, before the end of October, uh, along with some other interviews and other topics and other wonderful things on Titter Pigs. So uh, thank you all for watching. And until next time, have a wonderful day.